My name is Frances Staten, and I don't know if you're going to welcome me or not. I'm from Riverside, California. But I am a conservative, and I am Republican, and I can't imagine how Brown got in his government. I certainly didn't vote. <laughs> Is anybody in Washington thinking about or doing anything that will cause us to drill for oil? It seems to me that Obama, yeah. that Obama is trying to shut off the gas, the oil, and the coal. But it's so stupid. Uh, I mean, don't they realize that if we drill, how much money this is? Do they know that we have? a huge reservoir of oil in the United States. From what I have heard, it is bigger than Saudi Arabia. I don't really know that, but I have heard that it's bigger than Saudi Arabia. Don't they know how much this will do for the economy? Don't they know how many people this will put to work? Don't they know how, I mean, you hear about all these oil-rich Arabian states. I mean, they've given everybody hundreds of dollars. Let's us spend our money on oil here instead of spending that money on oil over some place where people don't even like us. Thank you very much. And anytime you want to move up here from Riverside, California, we'll welcome you. I've got a lot of friends there and not a lot of people. Great. Okay, so there's no more compelling issue in America right now than jobs part of why I focus on the deficit, because economists from throughout the world are pointing out that we're losing jobs, perhaps as many as a million a year, as a result of this crushing debt burden. We're also losing jobs as a result of the fact that we're spending between $500 billion and $1 trillion every single year, not as a government, not as taxpayers, but as consumers, on oil purchased from other countries. Now, there's some problems with that. First of all, we here in the United States can produce oil effectively, efficiently, cost-effectively, and in a manner that's far more environmentally responsible than how they produce it anywhere in the world. We have good laws, we enforce those laws, we can produce it clean, we can produce it cheap, and it benefits Americans when we do it. So when we decide not to produce oil here, what are we doing? Well, we're promoting the production of oil in other countries where they don't have the same environmental laws, where they're corrupting the environment. We're still using that oil. We're just enriching other people. And what kind of people are we enriching? Some of them want to kill us. They're not our friends. Many of these people are grown. And some of them are not very nice to women. Thank you for putting that delicately. So what would happen if all of a sudden we start developing our resources here? We could produce it in a way that would respect the environment, but it would also create jobs here in America, rather than in Saudi Arabia. I don't know about you, but I like the feel of that. Yep. Now, right here in Utah, we have a number of energy resources. We've got coal, we've got natural gas, we've got petroleum. We also have a structure, a geologic structure known as the Green River Formation. It touches small corners of Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. In the Green River Formation, we have something called oil shale. In that oil shale, we have upwards of 1.2 trillion barrels of proven recoverable oil that we could recover that we can produce. Let me put that in perspective. That's more oil than the combined petroleum reserves of Saudi Arabia, Russia, Nigeria, Canada, Mexico, Venezuela, and a few other countries. The top 10 energy producing, oil generating countries of the world combined have less petroleum than we have shale oil right here in Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. And yet, we're not producing it commercially. Why? Well, at least on the Utah side, almost all of that is locked up on federal land. They won't lease it to us. They need to. I'm going to keep pushing them until they lease it. We've got to produce it. We'll call it Fertile Arabia. We'll create jobs. We'll educate our children with that money. It'll stay here.